Back at Warrior Arena and sitting courtside along with yours truly, Dave Rosenthal. I'm joined by the head coach, Corey Laster. 69-57, the final score tonight. Coach, give me the positives out of this one. I thought we competed hard, which I wanted to see. I mean, coming off of uh, just one exhibition game, that's all we've had so far against a uh, D1 opponent. I didn't think we played well defensively. Um, we made some adjustments in practice today. Um, we're still playing without um, you know, a key starter that started last year for us. But I thought our energy was good, and I thought we competed hard. And um, I wanted to see a step forward from our first uh, exhibition game. And I saw that, and we just, uh, you know, we got to be able to maintain it and put it together. Now, got another game coming up tomorrow, which is a good thing. Always nice to put one of these losses behind you and get back at it right quickly but uh, who did you see on the stat sheet that stood out and uh, who did you see that maybe could help us a little bit tomorrow well i'm hoping lots of players can help us <laughs> tomorrow but um obviously you know um everything starts for us with andrea so she's you know again i think for her um just maintaining her composure out there on the floor sometimes it's a challenge because she's such a competitor but uh we need her to be good for us tomorrow and uh definitely we got to get that next next person in line i think there's some opportunities for kayla as well as for Amari um, to be a little bit more aggressive. I think it took them a little bit to kind of figure out their way in this game. And I'd love to see our guards, like some of the guards that we rotate in, fig figure out some ways that they can contribute offensively. So I think that's always going to be our challenge. Um, we lost some offense out of our lineup, so we're still searching for kind of some things that we can replace. Yeah, where are those points going to come from? Yeah, exactly. That's always the question for sure. Yeah. But, you know, when you put people in new roles, they sometimes, like, have to figure out what college basketball is like. We got... Some freshmen. We got a big team, but yet, you know, uh, not. We got a good amount that don't have game experience. So um, it's a different level, and so we're going to adjust to it. Um, so I think every game is a learning uh, curve. We want to play really good competition because we're going to see it in our league. No doubt about so that. So these guys are really good. Um, we knew they were good coming into the game. Um, I think this team is better than they had last year. They they a lot more dynamic in the post, a little bit more skill on the perimeter. Not as quick as they were last year, but at the same time, like. Uh, he's got a good ball club over there. So we knew the press was going to be a challenge for us. But I thought it helped us a lot to figure out, like, how to grow and, and what we needed to do. So we're not going to see pressure like that um, um, by everybody in the league. There's some people that can put it on you. But um, they gave us a good preview of what we need to do. And do you see length like they have, too, around the rest of the league? Because they've got some um, girls in that 6'6'2 six, six, range and quite a few of them. Yeah, I mean, I think D2, that's the difference. Like, we've we got to get used to, like, what Division two basketball is like. I think amongst the better teams, you've got to have some size. Got to be able to play multiple ways. And, you know, us, like, losing uh, Michaela Glenn, you know, early in the game, I thought she'd she, be all right. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, rolled I think it, she rolled, rolled her ankle. ankle, but probably we'll get, um, we'll go to uh, urgent care and kind of make sure there's not anything worse than that. But we had good plans for her in terms of defensively. She's one of our best rebounders. She's also really crafty around the basket. So I thought her speed and, and, and that was, like, missing for us. So, you know, we can't afford to miss post players. We're not the biggest team in the world. So, um, hopefully she's going to be all right. I think she will be. I'm, I'm thinking positive on that one. I like the way you think. So less than 24 hours, we're back at it again. The yeah. team we saw earlier tonight, mm -hmm. they'll be the opponent tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, you know, I think the big difference for me, I've coached most of my career at Division Two, and it doesn't matter who you play. Like, play, every team has some players. And so if you're not prepped for tomorrow, you're going to have a challenge for tomorrow. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter who you play. Like, you can play uh, the Anchorages and you can play, uh, you know, whoever it is. So you got to be prepared at this level. And so it'll be interesting how we bounce back. I think probably going to see a lot of zone again tomorrow. And we'll just have to do our best on trying to deal with it. And speaking of this, this jump from NAIA 1 to NCAA 2, is speed, is length, is it a combination of the two that is the big difference moving up? Yeah, I think, I think kind of the speed of the game, it's a little bit different. Um, coaches play fast generally. Um, I think also length, like you said. I mean, even if you don't have length in your forwards, um, you see mostly like 5'10", 5'8", point guards, right? In the eye, you'll see just as many 5'3", five 5'2", five type of point guards. Um, I also think the IQ is a little different, maybe a little deeper with the IQ. So instead of like 1 through 5, maybe it's 1 through 10 that they really make good decisions out on the floor. So you see that just maybe a little bit more consistent. Sometimes in NEI, um, the teams that are really struggling are really struggling. <laughs> and um, those, those situations. But here, I think the teams that are really struggling can still beat you. So if you don't have a good scout, you, you're probably walking away with a loss. Yeah. Um, so 
I think you've got to respect all opponents and, you know, the middle of the ground opponents we had in NEI and the best opponents we had in NEI uh, is probably what you've got to think about. Yeah, it's like upper echelon schools or the schools you'll see on a night-to-night basis Exactly, here. exactly. But, you know, honestly, we competed with, I thought, with a really good basketball team with great length. Um, so, you know, we can get a lot better. I think, you know, we, ha- we have heavy numbers, so sometimes that slows you down and you're, like, getting reps for players and, took us a while to sort of figure some of the, our lineups out you know so we're still a work in progress um i i think i was happy with a lot of what i saw i mean i was looking for the fight i didn't know exactly how the results were going to be but i think we still have a lot of room to get better especially on the boards all right well, we'll look forward to tomorrow see what we can do after today's loss he's the head coach Corey laster of your warriors 69 57 the final Stick around. We're about uh, 80 minutes away from basketball on the men's level, and that'll be, of course, your Jessup Warriors taking on the sister school tonight. How about that? Multnomah and Jessup coming up inside of 90 minutes right here on the network. Uh, Thank you very much to my crew in the booth and, of course, everybody on Scorers Row. Dave Rosenthal for the coach saying we'll be back with more hoops in just a little bit.